everybody, Nature the Rockstar here, and a market radar, and a review of today's trades, and uh, pretty much an outlook to see what we have coming up. Market's in a uh, pretty uh, treacherous area right now. We are um, going into a Friday, and we can't say anything other than, I mean, the market has been pretty depressing for most most people. Now, we've kind of changed our strategies over the last month as you know kind of gone into more short-term trading scalping of the markets maybe picking up some cheap you know some small shares here and there today actually we had a couple of good scalps one in um, ARK A-R-K-K the, the Kathy Woods uh, ETF um, fund and then also we did a couple spy calls and spy puts so uh, those worked out pretty good so we're going to look at the uh, the setups today, and then we'll review. Well, actually, we have it on the S&P 500. So I'll start off with this. And the one thing I will talk about is, you know, the nice day we had today. There's a nice big candle. If we take a look at the the bounce. Actually, actually, this candle, 39.31. Let's take a look at that again. 39.31. Yeah, all right, that's good. It's not the, it's not the best candle, but it was an okay candle. Uh, we're off the lows, closed here. A lot of people looking for a follow-through rally tomorrow. Now, when we get these follow-through rallies and we get these big days in the uh, in the markets, now we've been seeing a definite division between the Dow, the Nasdaq, and the S and P. You know, the Nasdaq has been really getting it. It's been taken down, approaching, I believe, approaching a correction phase of like 30% now. Let's take a look. Let's make sure we know exactly uh, what we have here from the highs here to where we are. This is not even exactly where we are. 29.68% about. Almost 30% correction on the NASDAQ. The 200 period moving average on the weekly is right underneath. That's 11,000. 371 that would uh that would effectively bring us down to 32 percent that would bring us a 30 percent correction um to scare the bejesus out of you a 50 percent correction which you know in this environment <laughs> would bring us down to eight thousand and uh change if, well, is that about right yeah is that off of um yeah, 8,000 and change. So uh, here was the coronavirus low, 8,000 and change. We take a little more look at it from the highs down to, we're just going to measure it out to a 50% retracement, 50% pullback here. It's right around 83.36. So let's put a line here. 83. Give or take, let's call it 83.60. That's good enough. You know, we'll, just to give you relative uh, where we're looking at on on the 2020 um, Corona low, the, the pandemic low, whatever you want to call it, before we really rallied. So, you know, another thing I want to look at is the the 50% retracement, which we're right about there on the Nasdaq right now. That's that's key. 50% retracement from pandemic lows to the highs we're in that 50 percent range that's a that's a pretty uh, significant number right there Not gonna, you know, make any significant calls. We've talked about it a lot on the radio, and I haven't even really mentioned, um, you know, broadcasting live each day. If in case you're not familiar with where we do our trading, daytradingradio.com, we'll be on the air tomorrow at eight o'clock. And you know, I'm still for the, um, I'm still rooting for that type of capitulation. Uh, type of volume to come into the market, a real, real marker in the charts, a volume, a 
a big candle, big reversal, a lot of fear, the VIX, everything. I'm, I'm still waiting for that to really kind of give the all clear. Because um, every every single bounce seems to be getting some selling into it. It's going to be hard unless we get a real true signal. Even if we get a bounce, five, maybe even, you know, 7% bounce in this market, there's going to be that uncertainty that we never really cleaned out the house effectively. You know, we didn't have that capitulation. Now, how do we know we're going to have the capitulation? Well, we, there's no guarantees in the market, but we've had this in these bear markets. We've seen the, the capitulation type of moves. Of course, in the 2020 Corona low, low, we had that nice 2018 real spike down. And, you know, if we take a look at the VIX, um, let me take a look at the other uh, better. We'll take a look at the uh, CBO market volatility index or what they like to call as the fear index. Here's the fear of coronavirus. Here's the fear of the 2018 debacle and end of 2018. Um, we go back out here further. You have, um, I'm sure 2012 is going to show up if I can get that chart to go all the way out for me. Let's go out to the weekly. Yeah, 2012, you can see that spike up here. Um, 2009, 2008, and then a couple of spikes here, and that big coronavirus spikes, spike. So on a daily, have we shown that fear yet that is required to really put in a bottom? Now, I don't see that. I don't see that. We haven't taken out the March uh, the VIX highs or the January VIX highs or December. You know, we've just been chopping around here at 35. Love to see a little spike in this. Um, you know, that's just what I'm waiting for. Now, today's market, as we wait for that to happen, there will be in some stocks. Tomorrow is going to be a great watch list. Tomorrow we're going to do our top 10 list, and it's going to be from members of Day Turn Radio. Uh, top 10 lists going out tomorrow for stocks on our shopping list. That means when we get to capitulation, what are the stocks that I'm going to try to sneak into? So I'm in them. I'm in some already. You know, we're starting to take positions in some, but I'm really going to work on um, giving you 10, 10 really great opportunities in the market. If you are there in front of the market during the capitulation, I talked about it all day today. You need to start raising some cash. We're pretty close. We're not there yet. I do think we have some more downside. Um, but, until, you know, so we want to be ready for that. we got to have our plan, our battle plan set. we got to know what stocks we're going to be looking at. So that's going to be coming out tomorrow. In the meantime, there is market, there is profits to be made in this market every single day. When you're in the uh, heat of battle during the day, it gets a little bit more nerve-wracking, a little bit more tense. You tend to, uh, you know... Uh, maybe not get all the setups. So I think it's important to review your trades or re re review the uh, charts. I, I call it the road roadmap of the markets and kind of go back and look at the positions that I should have took. Why didn't I take them or the ones I did take? Should I, you know, did, what did I do right? What, what did I do wrong? So, you know, we get into the office. I get into the office around 8 o'clock, 8.30. So being realistic, I'm, I shouldn't really be looking at the overnight trade because I'm not there. But I do like to po point it out because there is a lot of European traders out there that can take advantage of the moves. But for the purpose of this video, I want to start at 9 o'clock. And we're just going to, you know, maybe even 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And you can see a little choppiness here. Market opens up at 9.30. We've got a little pop and then a drop, rip down. And again, remember what we're looking for. We're really looking at two different setups in this type of environment. We're looking at that rotation what I call the triple rotation, which is kind of what the tradeometer is set on. So if you have the tradeometer, and the tradeometer is a tool, it's an algorithm, um, order entry indicator, I call it. It's one of the best order entry indicators for longs and shorts. And um, that's based off my, my rotations, where we have multiple time frames rotating down, getting oversold on multiple time frames, and we look for this these big pops. So... That's what we're looking for. We're also looking for the divergence set up off the stochastic. And on the one minute time frame, I want to see a clean divergence with a reversal candle and one other qualifying 
um, indicator to line up exactly with where the divergence is and maybe where the reversal is. Maybe it's on a channel line, part of a pattern. Maybe it's on the VWAP. Um, maybe it's a certain time frame that we pay attention to, but there's going to be a, um, you know, I would like to see about three things line up to really confirm a good, good divergence. So let's go through these. Market opens up. We get a little, and let's make sure we're on the right uh, time frame here. All right, it looks, it looks okay. Now, the, the market's open right now. It's up 20, 22 and a quarter points, so that's what that means. All right, so let's go back here. It's about 9 o'clock. We're going to pull them back here. we got a rotation here. we got a rotation on the 9-3 and the 14-3, but not a real rotation on the 60-10. Um, rule number one, or rule number, you know, one of the more important rules, if you're, if you're looking to take a long in the market, make sure your 9-3 and 14-3 are heading up through the, through the 20 line, that they're sloping up. All right, if you're looking for a short in the market, make sure your, your short-term stochastics are pointing down. I mean, that's just, just good practice right there. The odds are already in your favor. You have the momentum in your favor. As you can see, the odds are once you get overbought, you're getting a little pullback. Once you overbought, a little pullback, oversold, a little move up. Um, in some cases, you won't. You'll get a little, but you can usually tell when those signals are giving you false signals because of the lower tr lower stochastic band down here. And this is a series of higher lows, which is very bullish. So we have this upward move here. And these are the things that you'll learn over time. So, but the first thing we want to look for is a, what we call a good, good divergence. Now there's two types of divergences I'm looking for. A pure divergence where we have a lower, uh, let's take a look here. That's gonna be the F2 line here. Um, I'll show you a good, a regular divergence, if I can find one handy, because there's a lot of double bottom divergences. All right, so let's just show you the ones that I'm going to, so right here you can see that the price is kind of chopping around at the lows, at this, at this base here. It's not the low, but it's, it's right, it's holding that candle, holding that candle, holding the candle, holding the candle here. And uh, you can see here, we made a low when we first got down to the, uh, it looks like the, tw uh, the 50 period moving average there. We made that low. And then we started moving up on, on the 9.3 stochastics. Price moved up a little. Then the price came back and re-tagged the lows. But you can see that blue line right underneath us here. You see how we're above that blue line? That's important. That's, our, you know, that's an easy call for a divergence where we have this nice angle, a low and a higher low versus the low and an equal low or a double bottom. And when you see this type of thing, it doesn't happen. And what I think you should do is have it confirm on both the 14.3 and the 9.3. And the 14.3 is here. And again, here it is. So you had a 14.3, 9.3, a double bottom divergence. And what was the move afterwards? After that, you had a beautiful pop up. Markets uh, got up to a certain level, then rolled over. Really no signals. It pulled over, and we started getting a little weaker. Each of the rotations were sold into. So this was kind of a bearish flag. This is stochastic. The bigger time frame here, the 60 period is pointing down. It means a bigger trend. And each time you rotate back up fast, you're going to hold under the 20, and it's going to give us what we call a, a 2020 bear flag. In this case, it's a 2020 bear flag, like that, and it comes down like that, and it continues down. Um, now, this was a really good, good one here. You had a low here, right? And you had that low here. There's the 20 line, so it's definitely under the low. We came down, kind of tested it there, right? Then we came down and we tested it again. So kind of a triple bottom. But this test here, we turned back up. And it really put in a big steep divergence. And we talk about steep divergence. Steep divergence is a good divergence. First of all, a couple of things. We want to have it on the 14.3 and the 9.3. I don't have the 44 on this chart. I should put it on here. I'll put it on there in a second. But I'll also watch that 44. 
The second thing we have is a, a strong, a big angle. Instead of being flat down here, it's higher, much higher, this angle here between the, the 20 line and this, you know, it's a much steeper angle. The other important thing is that reversal candle. This candle right here is a nice hammer. We took out the lows, or at least held the lows, but we turned back up. So at that point right there, that was your, your trigger. Your stop goes in underneath the pre, you know, underneath that low, candle low. You always put that stop a tick under the candle low. That way you just protect yourself and it's just an easy, low risk trade. But the object is you have to pull the trigger the first thing. To put your stop in, you got to be in it. All right. So you put that stop a tick underneath it, that low, and you, and you let it ride. You know, you take that trade. Now, I, I, just, I always say, take it until it gets overbought, and then take profits and let the rest run. Market uh, pushes back up, fast rotation back down, fast rotation back down. This push, this kind of was still pushing higher, so we bounced back up. Finally, we got uh, kind of overbought here, and we started drifting back down. But nothing. Again, we're looking for a signal that can't be denied. Now here we had kind of a running divergence. Uh, this is the. Uh, you can see I actually took this trade here because I was waiting for that running divergence. I got it, but I took it off real fast. And the good thing I did because it popped. I got uh, three and a quarter points on it. No, it's five and a quarter points on it. I got. I got over. I got five and a quarter. That's just two candles on a one-minute time frame. I only had one contract because it was kind of a, a bad, sketchy downward market, and you had to be fast. But even if you do see a little divergence, it did give you a little bounce. The important thing is to take profits on the rotation. I got out real quick. Um, just wasn't feeling comfortable with it. Now, oh, what did I just do? Let me escape that. F2. We move on here. Um, nothing seeing anything. The market here just does not feel good. But right here, we see a low, and a double, and a, and, a, and that's at about 245, 250. A decent enough angle on that too. It's a steep angle. It's on the 9.3 and the 14.3. Qualifies as a double bottom. And from that point, we got a little pop back up, and it probably would have taken profits here if I took that one uh, above the 20, you know, and especially up against the 50. The 50 in this case is this orange line here. So you probably had a, uh, you know, a couple points on that. Uh, it came back down. If you ended up taking the trade, putting a stop underneath the previous, you know, underneath the divergence low, well, in this case, you never really got down past that low when you you took off. I mean, it ended up being a pretty good trade overall. But like I said, realistically, would you have been in this one because that rotation, I've been really, really um, fast on taking off on the rotation. So market here, 3, 2, 3, uh, 330, 340, that was about it. That was all she wrote. So not many great setups on the buy side, not um, on the short side. I didn't see any really uh, triggers there. We had this nice trigger. We had this one I did not take. And this one I did not take. But that was it. I mean, it wasn't much out there. We ended up taking the uh, trades on ARC today. Got in early on the gap down. Look at this ARC. It's getting hammered um, so right at right right in the morning I got in and it ran and we took it off so we got out at around 39 it got up to above 40 but I was fine with that I would do the same thing again on this Held up pretty good. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Try to get this out here pretty early uh, tonight, just for tomorrow, because we got a big list coming out tomorrow on those stocks. I want to start my research tonight. And um, again, if you're going to be around tomorrow, definitely join us at daytrainradio.com. You want us to check out everything. Um, 
again, specialize in uh, trading these MESs, especially during the day. They don't. It doesn't take much. Actually, I do see a setup here that I um, look at this. So you can see right here the little dip in the market, and then another dip right here. So let's take a look here. You kind of had that little. That might even have been a little divergence there. Look how the steepness of that is. That was steep, and it was on a 14.3 and a 9.3. I mean, honestly, that was right there. I mean, if you look at that and took that, overall, that was probably the, that was a really good level. I mean, that was 39.40. Now we're trading at almost 39.60. So that was 20 points ago on that little diversion. You see it, right? You can see that. I mean, that's that's what we have to be looking for. That's what we hunt. All right? That's what we do. So got to open up a futures account or see if you could have um if you if your broker allows you to trade futures symbols the mes but you could try to trade other micros but this is uh you know the nasdaq the same thing you're gonna get the same techniques the same charts um same setups it might not be exactly the same but that's what we're going to be looking for the same I'll take a look at MNQ. I'll take a look at the MNQ here. So MNQ, let's just kind of go back here fast. It wasn't exactly a double bottom there, but it was close. Here. That was a nice one. That, the NASDAQ futures up 132 right now. So that was a good divergence right here. That little lower low, that candle. Look how high that was. That was really nice. And that was a nice move. I mean, that reversal candle, you could have been in easy at uh, 40. It went up to 60, it uh, went 100 points. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a good one. That was at 12.15. There was a double bottom here. Maybe even a little divergence. Higher lows on that. 9-3-14-3 and the rocket move up here was perfect so another big move there and we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll look at these tomorrow too and this is important to stay on top of the nasdaq too because that's going to give you big moves all right so that's about it on this video i want to send this out i'll see everyone in the markets this is day trader rockstar for daytradingradio.com Drop a comment if you need any help, questions, anything explained, let me know. I'll get right on it. Take care.